All right, so for all of the online students, this is a special video that I'm um, shooting on the strategic case study to be specific, the modules. Now, this is a special request by one of my students called Anajwa, and so I am shooting this for her, but then because it's, I have students across, I need to also make this available for all of you. So it's a very important thing that we will only look at to look at all the various modules in strategic case study. So you stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment below with any questions that you are having as well. So let's get it started. So let's look at the various modules. Madam. And your number is part of the module. <laughs> My number is not part of the modules. <laughs> I'm now coming to start. So among other things, there are a lot of modules that you need to understand when it comes to strategic case study. But as you may have been aware already in the introduction to uh, uh, strategic case study, it is not about knowing the modules, but rather how to use the module in order to advise an organization. So here, the premise is not just about being babacious, that's not an English word, <laughs> on the modules, like chewing it on the modules, but then your ability to identify the modules in the case study and use them to advise companies. So among other things, these are the modules that we're going to be looking at. The first thing has to do with um, performance evaluation. Performance evaluation. With performance evaluation, the key model here is the balance scorecard by Kaplan and Norton. So the balance scorecard. Now the balance scorecard is a performance evaluation tool or framework that is used by companies in order to measure performances. So this is where we're we'll looking at the various four perspectives of performance evaluation. Financial, um, customer satisfaction, business processes, and then organizational capacity. So that is the first module and that is about performance evaluation. That's all about that. There is another one called the, three, uh, the triple bottom line. The triple bottom line. With this one, they look at performance evaluation, looking at um, the profits, looking at the planet, looking at the people. You see, one of the disadvantages of the um, balance scorecard is that it doesn't factor or take into consideration the effect of the business's operation on the environment. So the one way to deal with that is to use the triple bottom line module or framework where you are measuring performance, looking at profit, which is the same as financial perspective, looking at people, which is the same as the various stakeholders the company is uh, associated with. So customers come here, employees come here, the uh, uh, government comes here. Then the last one is the planet, where we look at how responsible we have been as a company to the environment. So that is what you need to understand when we talk about performance evaluation. Just that the triple bottom line will be used also later on as another framework when we are discussing something else later on, especially under corporate social responsibility, it's one of the things that will be there. Two, we come to organizational culture. Culture or organizational culture in a simple language has to do with the shared beliefs, norms, and principles within an organization. So organizational culture is one of the key things that the examiner is going to be examining you on because one of the things you'll be doing in the exam hall is to critically examine the organization. So the case study that the examiner will give you, you are going to be critically examining the uh, organization. And when you're examining the organization, one of the things that will come into being is the type of culture in place. So to understand organizational culture, the module we're going to be using here is what we call the Charles... Handy's types of organizational culture. <laughs> types Handy's types of organizational culture. So Charles Handy mentioned that among other things, there are about six or seven types of organizational culture. We have the power culture. We have the role culture. We have the entrepreneurial culture. We have the um, team culture, 
we have the personal culture and uh, remaining two, I think so, but that's it. So these are the various types of organizational culture. Now, the characteristics of these types of organizational structure is what you must know so that when you are critically examining the question, you can determine the kind of organizational structure that is in place within the organization. Third, it's our favorite area, and that is going to be on environmental analysis. It's a very huge area, environmental analysis. This is when we're looking at both the internal environment of the business as well as the external environment of the business. Now, when it comes to environmental analysis, I have further divided it into various forms or types of environments. So the first one is to look at the macro environment, the macro environment or the external environment. Macro or the external environment. This is where we're going to be using our good old day textile framework or module. Pestle framework or module. So this is where we look at the political factors, economic factors, social factors, technological factors, environmental factors, and the legal systems or factors in the organization or in the country that we are in. Please note that this environmental analysis is not a one-time event that an organization undertakes. But the organization has to undertake those events on a regular interval so that the company identify the various factors within the macro environment and how the factors are changing and the effects of those factors on the organization. Then we come to the second one and that is going to be the international the international business environment. International business environment. This is where we're going to be using the Portes Diamond. The Portes Diamond, Michael Portes Diamond module. So the question we are asking ourselves under international business environment is, why are some countries enjoying competitive advantage in certain industries than other countries? That is the idea about the international business environment. Why is it that now when we talk about technology, China is rising, even though initially it was US. Now China is rising. Where is Ghana? So when we talk about technology and compare the technological industry with China's, Ghana's technological industry with China's, why is it that China is above Ghana? What are the things? That is what we'll be discussing at the world, the Portes Diamond. Because what? Ghana likes farming. <laughs> <laughs> because Ghana likes farming. But China today farm. Yeah, yeah, we are expertise is in the farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another Portes framework. Here, Michael Porter believes that there are four factors that affect these things. I'll be discussing them. We have the factor condition. We have the, um, um, I don't know, I, I, I can't just bring them up. Okay. I will just leave them. I will just leave them. We have the factors condition. We have the internal business strategies. We have the uh, competitive rivalry. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why it's not coming. Let's continue. We are going to choose them one by one. Yes, like under the module, there are four things. These are the four factors that affect and uh, that brings that international competitive advantage. So when it comes to banking, investment banking, it's well known in the UK. So UK is enjoying that kind of competitive advantage. Pharmaceutical, it is the US and I think um, maybe it's not Cuba. There's another country. So why is it that when you pick some industries, some countries enjoy economic advantage over the others. So here yeah, we'll be looking at the four factors. The first one is factor condition. That has to do with availability of factors of production in the countries. China, they have it. But Ghana, we have a problem. So another thing has to do with the um, competitive rivalry in the local country. So in the local country like Ghana, what is the competitive rivalry there? Strategy is also there. Then the third thing there has to do with the availability of substitute industries. 
industries or supporting industries. So, you see, you cannot become successful as a company without other supporting what? industries. So, what are they available? If they are available, then it will give you competitive edge over another. And then the last one has to do with demand conditions. So, where did I get them from now? Yes, so that is the thing. So if you want to be successful as a banking as a bank, then you need to have strong technology framework. So how is that IT industry in Ghana? Are you getting the idea? That is the supporting industry. If you're a car manufacturing company, what will be the supporting industries? There should be companies manufacturing the tie. Manufacturing the screen, a windscreen, engine. manufacturing the engine, the battery of the car, these are all supporting industries. So if they are available, then it will give you that competitive edge on the international front. That is the idea about diamond, and we'll look at them later on. So external on the macro environment pistol, international competitiveness for the uh, diamond, and then competitive rivalry. Industry and competitive rivalry, competitive analysis, sorry, industry and competitive analysis. This is why we look at the Porter's five forces, Porter's five forces. Now this one has to do with on the domestic level. So like in Ghana, how can we measure the competitiveness of the industry? So there are five factors that we'll be talking about here. We're we'll looking at the bargaining power of our suppliers, we we'll look at bargaining power of customers. We we'll look at availability of substitute products. We will look at the what threat of new entrants. And then the last one is what organizational strategy, structure, and process. So these are the five forces, and we'll look at them later on. Number five has to do with. Stakeholder and scenario planning. Stakeholders and scenarios. One of the things we'll be doing in this course is to understand our stakeholders. Now, our stakeholders are within the environment. So that yeah, that's, that's still on the three. Yes, that's still on the three. So we need to understand our. Uh, our stakeholders or know our stakeholders. So the way we know our stakeholders is to use what we refer to as the stakeholder mapping. So it's a module we'll be looking at to find out how we can identify our stakeholders. Then another module here is called the scenario planning. The scenario planning. This has to do with where an entity sits down and analyzes what are some of the things that are likely to change in the environment then they will design strategies to combat with what? Some of those strategies. And that is the idea about scenario planning. Combat this? Uh, without changing. So for example, is it like the, in the treasury market side to check if the, the rates will go up or something? Yes, that's, that's all about the, uh, the scenario planning. So for instance, the way exchange rates are doing in Ghana, Scenario planning can be where the organization sits down and says, okay, the next six months, what will be the rate of change? Will it be worse or it will be better? If it will be worse, what do we do so that it doesn't affect us as a company? The government, the way it is going, what kind of policy are they likely to bring that will affect our operation? So they sit down, speculate all of those scenarios, and then make a strategy today so that in case it occurs, it doesn't affect what they are operations. So that is the idea about scenario planning. And that is what you have to understand about the external environment. Then we come to the internal environment. So E, the internal environment. In the internal environment, also we'll be borrowing three different modules. The first one is called Porter's Value Chain Analysis. Porter's Value Chain Analysis. So this is where we look at the core activities of the company and the non-core activities of the company so that the company can focus on the core and possibly outsource the non-core activities. So we're looking at that. 
From there, we will look at SWOT analysis, identifying the strengths, weaknesses, the opportunities and threats that a business is exposed to, that it is having. And then the final thing is gap, gap analysis. Don't do that. The gap analysis has to do with where we compare our actual performance against our potential. So what is it that we can do as a company and what are we doing now? We identify the gap. If the gap is wide, then we find out how we can close that gap as a company. So that is what you have to understand when we talk about environmental analysis. Then we come to the third one. And that one, I titled it as strategic... The fourth one. Is it number four? Yeah. Okay. So, strategic modules for strategic choice. Strategic module for strategic choice. One of the things you'll be learning in this course primarily is to be able to assist companies so they can make a decision and help them to gain what we call sustainable competitive advantage. Now, in gaining of sustainable, now when we say sustainable competitive advantage, we mean being at the cutting edge, leading the markets, dominating the markets for a long period of time. So it's not that this year, yeah, everybody say, yeah, 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 next year, no, it's right premium, nobody knows about him again. No. Sustainable competitive advantage means you being there for decades. So how do businesses or how will businesses make various choices so that they can gain this sustainable competitive advantage? These are some of the modules they can use for that. The first one is called the Portes Generic. <laughs> the Portes Generic Strategic Module. Yeah, Porter has done a lot of contribution. He's there now. Mm, I don't know. I think he's alive. He's at the Harvard Business School. I think he's a he's, Then he's your uncle. If he was there, the uncle, he would not be your uncle. <laughs> now, so Porter Generic, this is where companies must decide in order to be a competitive, uh, to gain the sustainable competitive advantage, among other things, to be a cost leader. So here we look at a cost leadership strategy. We will look at the issue about the differential strategy. We will look at the focus strategy and then the focus differential strategy. So these are the four strategies company can adopt. When we say cost leadership, it means being the lowest cost producer in the industry. And then differential strategy means charging a premium and giving people other um, uh, complementary services. Focus strategy is where you look into the market and then you focus on the nature of the market. Then in that market, you can decide to be a leader there or differential there. Then the focus differential is just like this one, but this time around, you are focusing on the nature of the market and you are going to be a bit of differential there. So these are all strategies companies can adopt in order for them to gain that sustainable competitive advantage. Now, as to which one will work would depend on the objective of the company, would depend on the aim of the company. Because I, for instance, if I'm running a company, I don't want to be a cost leadership. I want to be a differential. You charge premium and you give people other complimentary more services. Nice, more nice services. <laughs> right? But if you want to be cheap, it's also a good strategy, but it's premium. So if you go to companies like Hermes, Prada, Rolls Royce, um, Bugatti, Ferrari, those guys, they are using this kind of what approach. They are not cheap. Trevor, you are also a little focused. I'm also a little focused. So I'm doing focus. I'm doing focus differential. <laughs> All right, so that is the idea. So it depends on the objective of the company. If it is just for us to dominate and make noise a lot, then we can do cost leadership but if it is to single out and adopt or attract a certain class of people then we will go for the other ones that's the first one second the strategic clock the strategic clock now the strategic clock is another module just 
a development from the potted generic. With the clock, it is where we have about nine various decisions that when business make, they can gain competitive advantage, and when they make, they won't get competitive advantage. So we'll be looking at that later on. We have the no frail strategy, where we are charging low price, and people don't buy anything. So it's more or less like a cost leadership strategy. Then we have another ones that are differential. So the strategic clock was developed as a result of what? A build-up from the, uh, the portal generic. But it was developed by a different author. And I'll look at it later on. Next one is the product life cycle. Your favorite one? Product life cycle. So analyzing the various stages through which products will go through in their life in their cycle, and then designing various strategies at various stages so that we will gain what competitive advantage, and we will be looking at that also. Then the final one there is the BCG growth metrics module. The oh, BCG. Like yes, please. The BCG <laughs> growth share metrics. BCG stands for the Boston Consulting Group. Boston Consulting Group Growth Metrics. Now, this metrics has to do with how an organization manages various products. So, for instance, if the organization produces more than one product, the BCG Growth Metrics helps the company in order to identify which product is doing well and which product is not doing well. So, under this growth model, we're going to be dividing all our products into four. We have what we call the cash cow, we have what we call the problem child, we have what we call the dog, and then the last one, I forgot to, when I remember I'll tell you. So these are the four ways. Problem child. <laughs> and then we have the dog there, the last one when I remember I'll tell you. Now the cash cow is a, is a The cash cow is the product that is really giving us what? Money. The problem child is a product that, you know, as the name suggests, it's problem. It's in the in a very competitive environment and it's not giving us much money. And we're going to be putting these things on a graph to illustrate them. The dog is a product that is in the, it's not growing. The market is not growing, but I know I made much profit. So sometimes, Will you want to leave the dog? Will you want to stop producing it? No, because if it is a complementary product to the other product, then even though it is a loss making, even though the market is not growing, you must still continue what? to produce it. I don't know why the fourth one is not coming. Cash cow. So let's continue. When we get there, I'll remember. So that is the idea about the strategic modules for strategic choices. Now, in addition to these four, there are other strategic choices that companies make, and I've divided that into other forms. And the first one is portfolio analysis. So it is still under the strategic choice, but I have brought that under what I call portfolio analysis. So portfolio analysis tools. Now when we say a portfolio, what are we referring to? What is it, a portfolio of a business? Portfolio of whatever. What, what are we talking about? Yeah? Comment below. What is portfolio? Yes, I've told him. <laughs> you comment below. <laughs> then put a comment there. All right. So this has to do with both. Um, you see, when an organization produces more than one product, the products together become so, the portfolio of products for the business. Then also a company can also have a portfolio of what? Businesses in various industries, like Group Indu, like um, uh, Ecobank, what's their parents' company? I'm forgetting the name. Something, something international. So it's also a parents' company. So the various businesses under that become so, a portfolio. The question is, how do we analyze the portfolio of businesses to identify which one we are supposed to not spend time on and which one we are supposed to not ignore. So it looks like the BCG consulting. The first one there is called the public sector portfolio metrics. Public sector portfolio metrics. 
Now, one thing about this is that the BCG growth module, per the way it is structured, actually works in the manufacturing sector. We will look at it later on. But what about the service sector? What about the government sector? So we will be using this to analyze the various activities government undertake. And here we'll be looking at the difference between value for money and whether there is funds available to undertake the project. So if it, is, it has a high value for money and people are demanding for it, then we need to what? provide that service to the people. That's what we'll be looking at under public sector. So here we'll be concentrating on the government. Second one is the directional policy metrics. Directional policy metrics by Shell International Chemical Company. Shell International Chemical Company. So they developed this module in order to help businesses also to analyze portfolio and we'll look at that. Is that a shell we know? Is that a shell? Is it a shell we know? Yeah, the yeah, shell you know. The next one is the market attractiveness. Market attractiveness. Or SBU, Strategic Business Unit Strength Metrics. Strength Metrics. This one was developed by three different organizations. The General Electric in the U.S. McKenzie and then Shell. So this one was developed by three companies. Where we look at portfolio management as based on how the market is and then the strategic business uh, unit strength. And we will look at all of these things later on. So that is the first thing, portfolio analysis, and that is still under this. Second one has to do with corporate parenting styles. Corporate parenting styles. That's the way your module is getting. Governance and by ethics and by. <laughs> it looks it looks much, eh? So we can read before we come to class. But really, it doesn't. It looks much, but it's not much. It's like when I do, when you watch my first video on financial reporting or corporate reporting, I listed all the accounting standards down. People are like, oh, are we going to learn all this? Yeah, you will learn. So this one, it will just be unfolding without you even knowing. Before I realize it, we are done. So I don't want you to just look at this. Hey, you know, file. File, file. But then, it is not all that certainly you have to learn chin -chin -chin for the years of us. No, we, I will teach you everything, but me can say it's no, not much no, as the way you teach you teach not everything. I'm just trying to say, they are good people. <laughs> she wanted to say they are heartless. <laughs> I've said it for you. <laughs> Who is heartless? It's not an issue. You see, don't panic. Don't start panicking. <laughs> don't start panicking. Okay, so under corporate parenting style, what are we looking at? Two modules to be specific. The first one is called the gold. I don't know, or gold, sorry. Gold. Is it one O? Yeah, one O. Gold and, no, it's double O, sorry. That's why I didn't say gold. <laughs> gold and come. Campbell approaches approaches to parenting style. You see, this one is about 
How a parent company relates with its strategic business units or subsidiaries. So how will we manage them? That's the first module. And then the second one is the Anchorage portfolio display. So we have money. Anchorage portfolio. Ashridge or Ashridge. And I got it saying Ash Rage, whatever that one is. Portfolio display. Okay. So that's it about that. So that is it about the fourth thing the various choices companies can make. The various choices company can make. So what, what, what does this all mean? You see, in the case study, as I always say, the examiner is not going to say, eh, use, if I say, <laughs> eh, search analysis, or use strategic club, baby. Here, it's about strategic choice. So this is where you are going to be making recommendations. So based on the case, you would have to quickly let your mind go. Hey, which module so we have to know can that I? If you know uh, the model, how will you know? Then you have to, if you are choosing the model, you have to know it very well. Not know it because the answer will not be about the module. The, module. the answer will be connected to the question. Yeah, how you frame it? For example, if you don't know the S is strength, you think it's strength. <laughs> okay, I know. I get it, I get it. So, yeah, you will know, you should know. But then, because it says you're about company now, then you make the decision for the company. But definitely, you must know all of them. But then you must now be able to know that the question is can say, and I say, yes, he say yeah. this is the kind of module that I'm going to be using. So it goes beyond just knowing the module, but it's about application of the module. Sure, the application it will come from the case study. So mm -hmm. like because if, for instance, if, for instance, you have a case study and you read a case study, and then the examiner says, suggest the strategies that a company can take in order to make or to gain competitive advantage. And BSG is in your mind, but the company is not producing more than one product. And in your mind, discretional or directional policy metrics is there. Then there is good and Campbell is there. Sort analysis, the gap is there. In that kind of circumstance, it is producing one product and it wants to gain competitive advantage. Then the, most, the best module that will occur here will be from the portal generic or the strategic clock. So it is not just about, as I mentioned earlier, being barbacious, but knowing how to apply. That's why we'll be solving a lot of case questions as we go ahead. Even from the question you just cited, so can you come from this angle that, I say, also like, what was the question? Design strategy. So what strategies do the company make in order to gain competitive advantage? Now the case has been started in such a way that they are in, a, in, a, in an industry that is competitive, there and there, and what strategies do we do they take place in order to dominate in the industry that they are in? Should I, what are the potential factors that come in? Did he didn't ask you and undertake an industry so analysis? So you don't come from that. You we, who go there? Some because that time. No. Minimum process. So that would be digressing. Isn't that you have to understand? In the hand, or say make strategies. Recommend. It is, these are strategic choices. Sure. And I understand what you're saying. But if you mean you have the potential generic strategy in your mind, yeah. you don't know what it entails and how to use it. It's not because say, you, you must know. know but then it's also about the application. My focus is not the knowing because I know the knowing you will know. I know you can read. Chew the baba. I think yeah, no, no, no. Yes. Per the question, you need to know how to go about it. Certainly. I mean, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. You need the strategy. So, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you need the strategy. So, what kind of module is this? You see, what I'm trying to say, I don't know if you, you two are not getting it. But for the scenario, can you answer the question without necessarily mentioning any module? You see. The, it's two choices. Mentioning the module will be an advantage. Mm. Whoa, so definitely. And then you won't mention you have to do the module. And Amika said, knowing is one. I know you will know. Why are you saying you know? I know you will know because I know you will read all these modules. You see, so we have to know one thing. Are you getting it? But then, my focus is not just about the reading. 
The reason I'm emphasizing on this thing is the way the case is going to be. See, it's your I know. But you see, for example, the last time we wrote, um, the last time I wrote, um, this the corporate strategy. Corporate strategy. The case was chat. Was about this mobile money thing. Yeah. Was chat. And then what we were using was Potter's five forces. So. But if you read and then we do and you read it, so what we did was we. But if, at least if you know Potter's five forces, you know about rivalry. You know about and threat of entrance by being called you know when you see something you'll be able to do but if you don't know at all what eh, so they know we know here yeah. <laughs> but the application is important it is their own kind of application uh-huh. you know? yeah, a- application they do all share things that you can apply but if you know the model then you can apply but yeah, because I possess five forces. You don't know what it is. Because they're poor, you're not going to be so good. I possess five forces. I don't know what you say. No. So then how do you apply? So that is why I said you will learn. But maybe focus. I know you will learn because I'm convinced you will learn. We learn the same dose. Dose, no. But that's it. That's it. Do you agree with that? Comment it. Put it in the comments box. Nanajo is saying, Nanajo and Margaret, they are saying that it's too much. Do you agree? I know you will say yes, but whether you say yes or no, that is what you are supposed to do. <laughs> so that is it about that. Then the last one, number five. Number five. Now, number five is not modules, really. <laughs> number five is not modules, really, but it's just about organizational structure types. Okay, so these are not modules. Organizational structure types. So the various types of organizational structures. You must know them. Tall organizational structure, matrix organizational structure, wide organizational structure, the advantages, the disadvantages, those things. Then the last thing is implementation of strategy. Of organizational strategy. This is why we use the McKenzie McKenzie 7S module. That's all. McKenzie 7X module. Now let me explain to you how these things are interrelated. With the environmental analysis, you'll be able to understand the various environments or the environment of the business. With the strategic choice module, you can now design a strategy for what? The company. Then, after a strategy is designed, it has to be what? Implemented. So how do we ensure that the strategy is implemented and monitored properly? That is where the McKenzie 7S module comes in. So this is where we look at the 7S for strategy implementation. It has to do with staffs, systems, uh, and a lot of things. 7S is now we analyzing about them. So these are what you have to understand have to about the about modules. Implementing it and then you have forgotten all the 7S and remember just one. So maybe depending on the question, if you remember the one, I want to have a team So that is it about that. So that's it about the discussion, and uh, you can comment below with any questions that you have, and I'll answer them. And make sure you share the video so that we can reach more people and assist more people. So I'll see you in another video as we continue with our discussion.